Doors locked, seven. Get to work. Shoulder day, man. So, shoulders for me, I took like five years off of really training shoulders. Because when you're boxing, if you do shoulder day, you're like this, and you're like, oh, my shoulders are sore, and then get hit in the face. So, shoulders are very important, especially for me, someone who doesn't have the most muscular physique, adding to that taper down to my small waist. So when I'm going up against these midgets in 212, ah, midgets are the wrong word, small people, but they're not small. Little people, no, not little either, short people. Really short people, I'm short. These guys are ultra short. Okay, so these guys are big, but the one thing I have is flow. So the wider the shoulders, the smaller the waist. That's how Gunther beat Ronnie at the 2002 show of strength. He brought up his shoulders, made his waist look smaller, Ronnie came in off, and that's my hope. Everybody else has a bad day, and I have a really good day. So, shoulder day, start with heavy presses. I used to start with laterals, but you know what, this arsenal press right here, you know, get in here, go hard, go heavy. Um, I'm just make sure it's on the highest one, it is. And um, another thing is I come down to about 90 degrees, I'm a pretty big guy. My range of motion is the best, so I always start with the seat lower, and I'm only coming to here. A lot of people come here. I want it right here. I don't want to risk any injury in here. I want to overload as much as possible. Start climbing up. This is a very heavy machine. If you look, the weights are very close to the handle. That means there's very little leverage. You're just lifting straight up weight, straight up gravity. So generally, I work up to my heavy weight, and then I do a all-out set. Today I'll probably do rest pause, or I'll do as many rests as possible, rest for 20 seconds, then do as many rests as possible. Then I'll do a back off set. So the first four to five sets, they don't really count. Kind of like Dorian, except actually a lot like Dorian, where you work up. So people say Dorian only did one to two sets. No, he did like six sets, but those were the workup sets. But he did one all-out set to failure. And with training two days on, one day off, I can actually do that. I can recover enough, and, because this will mess you up for a good week. Uh, during training, so in here is 015 Nutrition Intra Advantage. Got a scoop of that and a scoop of machine fuel. So we got the carbs in there, the EAA, and some extra BCAA. Cover my ass during training. Make sure, I need carbs. Like I will fade. Cause right now my diet I'm at, um, 360 protein, 350 carbs. Fat comes from whatever trace. So even with those macros, I burn out quick during training. So I make sure to get carbohydrate during training. And Intra Advantage has carb 10 and the cyclic dextrin, which is a very slow, controlled, very fast actually, but it doesn't spike your insulin, so you won't crash from having the carbohydrate. Really great carb combination. So this one is my last workup set. I'm gonna get probably three to four reps, save it for the last one. <sighs> Time to go. I 
Gotta wait. So generally rest periods, there's no set rest periods, right? Like the first four sets, I wasn't going to failure and I wasn't gonna go fail on the next set. So this set, I wanna make sure I recover. So this will be about a two to three minute break before I hit this set. Cause then I'm going all out, leaving nothing on the table. And uh, after the Arnold, even though I've taken off Monday and Thursday from the gym this week, my recovery is a bit hindered. So, you know, being on your feet for three days, set up, break down, you know, you just kind of kind of read your body. But I'm doing a two on one off split now. So that's gonna enable me to recover and also have more time to work. <laughs> Cause stress will kill you, man. But we'll see how this goes today. That felt heavy, so I'm gonna come down a little bit. So, I thought I'd get five plays for more, but today it wasn't in me. So instead of doing a rest pause, modified immediately, did drop sets. Key component, that's all I got. Like, I could literally go home now and know my shoulders worked. We still got lateral raises, a bunch of other shit to do. Oh yeah. Yeah, you can see my shoulders right now. Look at my left shoulder. It's ready. Mm -hmm. It's ready coming in. It's crazy how quick that works. What do you mean? Alright. Lateral raises, we start out strict. Last set, we're going branch warrants down, man. We're hitting the 70s today.
Yeah, so it's crazy. Um, the changes your body goes through as you switch it on, like simply measuring my food, because when you eyeball things, just, you don't know what the hell's in there. You think you do. Eat out, go to restaurants, Chipotle. Once you start measuring, hunkering down, controlling the condiments and none of the sauces from restaurants, like your body changes. And a lot of people who eat out all the time, like I know people who every three meals a day, they're getting DoorDash, you know? Like you're just not gonna be, you're not gonna be optimal, you're just not. You gotta control your variables. You gotta cook your own food. I noticed that this week I was 130, I was like, I was 235 at the Arnold. Today I'm 224 and my calories are ultra high, which, you know, it shows you like what the fuck else is in that food. Cause I was eating all I could eat, right? But right now I could barely get all my meals in. I'm stuffed all the time. Now I don't have the biggest appetite, but I was eating so much. I thought for sure I'd wake up the next day after Tuesday, like, I'm gonna definitely be like 240. <laughs> 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 60 minutes. So I think a lot of people, especially if you fit your macros, flexible dieters, you know, they'll be able to get in shape, but you know, if you're eating out a lot, if you're doing the Chipotle thing, and I'm a Chipotle guy, man. When I travel, beef and rice, steak and rice. The steak's leaner than the chicken at Chipotle. Steak and rice, steak and rice. And it's not just the sodium, because I keep my sodium really high. Um, you don't know what you're getting. Like, I've had Chipotle scoop me five ounces one time and three ounces the next. You just never know. They ain't got a food scale there they're using. They're using a spoon. So to think for a second that the calorie charts at restaurants are anywhere near accurate, you're out of your mind. Haircut? Headphones. Oh. <laughs> you did get a haircut though. Oh, you. different, different coming in when you're clicked in and every set matters, like, it's different. So, I said in my video on the Tiger Fitness channel, like, you know, right now, science literally says you don't have to, it's actually bad to go to failure or beyond failure, that's better to go three or four reps left in the tank. I don't think they're training, that data is not done on pro bodybuilders getting ready for shows, or people trying to get to that level. It's done on average trainers, but my, my gains have come from pushing it and going until you have nothing in the tank. And I know that science might say otherwise, but you look at the greats, Dorian, Ronnie, all those guys, like, they train hard, and they leave nothing in the tank. 
Sometimes you just gotta tell science to fuck off. Because you can't control the variables of pro versus average trainer. Like just cause it's a college, college individual, college age male who's training, doesn't mean you can apply that science to a pro bodybuilder who's enhanced, right? Like we don't know. Or even a natural bodybuilder. You know, it's like, who knows? So data gives us a picture. Might give us some hints, but you gotta go what works best for you. You can't tell me that three sets of 10 reps when you could have done 15 is gonna build more muscle than that. Sorry, it's just not. <clears throat> now, if you're not competing and you're just trying to stay in shape, if I was to do the Chicago Pro, I wouldn't be doing this. It's just not worth it. It's not worth the damage. Like, this shit hurts. And uh, recovery, it'll fuck up your rest of your day. Like, playing with your kids, you'll feel your muscles hurt. You just gotta work through it. Smile and fake it. Like, you cannot do this and regular shit. You just can't. There's just no way you'd be able, you'd be able to do it, but not, I'm doing it. It's not optimistic because you're spent. The amount of shit that takes out of your nervous system, that's why you can't, can't be training six days a week when you train like that. You just fucking can't. about two sets here. <clears throat> so, the thing a lot of people ask me about is my elbow sleeves. So these are strong sleeves, um, slingshots. So um, Mark Bell slingshot, just type in um, Mark Bell elbow sleeves on Google. I don't got a coat or anything, but Mark Bell's my dude. So uh, these are the best. You, need, you can't put them on by yourself, you need help. But um, I wear an extra large, put in perspective. My arms are about 11 inches. And uh, 
So these are just the best by far. So if you need elbow sleeves, again, I ain't got a code, I ain't got commission, but uh, the Mark Bell strong sleeves, the uh, slingshot strong sleeves are the best. And I've used a bunch of them. I've been doing uh, rack lockouts, rack pulls for back. So I've been fucking with shrugs, because rack pulls, you're getting that same motion. And uh, trying to avoid redundancy in my program. Because for all you guys who are aging, like, I don't know if it's because I'm training harder and I'm heavier. Heavier weights you get, the longer it takes to recover, the more danger you have. Because obviously, doing 135 on bench, I don't care who you are, is safer than doing 405. So every lift you do when you're stronger is adding more risk than when you were weaker. Also, your nervous system is still your nervous system. So the heavier you go, the more recovery you need. But also, I don't care how many drugs you take, father time is undefeated. I gotta come to reality that I'm over 40. So I can't train like a 20 year old. I can, but I won't get results because I won't be able to recover and get back in the gym. Like that shoulder press, I should have gotten more reps. My mind was in it, couldn't have been any more mentally ready, but I'm still recovering from the Arnold. But that's the thing, not every day if you have a job. Like you look at my partner, Brandon Curry, when he gets ready for a show, he goes to Kuwait. It's all he does, trains, sleeps, trains, sleeps, eats, 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 right? For me, I got, five plus businesses, three kids, I coach. I have a lot of stress, a lot of responsibility, so, and I miss meals, like I'm human. So you gotta put it in perspective, like, unless this shit's your job, you have to go by how you feel. So this goes. Um, so many ways to do front raises, so a lot of your front delt gets hit when you do a press, right? So I actually, I like this. I actually like having the more neutral grip coming up as I feel it more in my delt head when I do this. So I feel like I'm hitting that shelf right here. I'm hitting some chest, but I also feel it more in my interior uh, delts. So for me, I just feel this a little more. My opinion is you barbell, you dumbbell, do them bilateral, unilateral. <clears throat> At the end of the day, just find what works best for you. And this is what I'm feeling right now. That doesn't mean in two weeks, I won't go back to what I used to do. <clears throat> So we did 
Press, lateral raise, rear delts. We'll do one more lateral raise. Because I feel lateral raise are just the shit for shoulders. More controlled machine, less body mechanics, body English. We'll do a couple sets of triceps and uh, we'll go recover. address so people will see an all-out set because that's what I post on Instagram because it's it's heavy it's impressive and they'll be like oh you know the forms off you're swinging time and place so when you do like a cheek curl you, okay you're not doing the full range of motion if that's all you did that'd be horrible but you're still getting the weight overload at the top a lot of benefits right <clears throat> So like on lateral raises, I was swinging a little bit. So if I just post that, you'll be like, you're an idiot. What you don't see on those little Instagram clips are me doing slow control movements with perfect form. So you know I'm not black and white with anything. There's gray areas. There's a time and place for body English. There's a time and place for perfect form. You don't have to choose. You can use both. Time and place, like a lot of people get too caught up in camps, just like Democrat, Republican. It's all tribalism, man. You do the same thing for training, CrossFit, bodybuilding, powerlifting. They all have their place. What do you enjoy doing? So for muscle growth, you see Branch Warren, you see Ronnie, some of these guys who used more liberal form, so to speak. Still liberal conservative. Then you got you know, your Dexter Jacksons and those guys who've been around who uh, do more conservative form. They all look great. Why can't we take a little bit from each of them and create our perfect training program, right? So if you want to do heavy laterals and use a little bit of swinging, that's fine. Just be sure to add in some strict movements, even on your warm-ups. Thing is, like, we show my heavy sets, right? On my warm-ups, on 40 pounds, I'm doing perfect form. But I don't even think I could do 70 pounds strict because that's 140 pounds you're raising like this. It's a lot of weight. Let's see how this goes. Strip down, do some uh, triceps, some press downs. Now realize on every pressing movement, you're working arms. So we just get it in, go heavy, make sure we knock them out. some lube. That's nature's lube. I thought this was a family gym. 
Hey, Corey, remember that one time we got in trouble for training too hard? Oh, uh, yeah. When that, that lady walked in? Yeah. <clears throat> it was leg day. Yeah, we, we didn't do anything crazy. We've done much worse. Much worse. Nineteen weeks today. It's a Friday show. I've never done a Friday show. Not that it matters. I used to do them standing like this. Now I've been doing more of a push. I don't know which one I like better. But uh, this is what I'm doing. <laughs> it's like, so Cutler used to do them like that, where instead of doing this, he'd lean in and push down. And it makes sense from a leverage standpoint, because you're able to push heavier weight, load a little bit more. Because when you're like this, if you don't weigh enough, you can't really balance. So, if it worked for Jay. This was gone for four weeks from coaching wrestling. And it's funny because I went to the Arnold, I usually use my voice. My voice got better <laughs> after the Arnold. So, came back just enough. So we're just gonna do a couple sets of this, burn out, and then we're good. So like I said before, like with triceps, okay, we're using leverage on that, right? We're getting full contraction, but then follow up, full range of motion, nothing but isolating the tricep. <clears throat> so again, when I'm coaching athletes, perfect form all the time, but bodybuilding is just fucking different. It's about overloading the muscle. So sometimes intensity, begets some breakdown in form. And that's the thing I try to show people, is that you could have great, like, other than one set, not even the whole set, my form maintains its integrity. 
But on that last set, if I'm trying to eke out another two reps, and let's say I'm only getting 80, 70, even 60% muscle recruitment, but have that increased load, and I'm going beyond what I could have done, that's progressive overload. So I'm pumped to the point of discomfort right now. You didn't see me hit myself in the head there, did you? Damn it. That's it. So, whew, what the hell did I do? Heavy press, up to five plates, and I didn't get what I wanted to get, so I drop set it. Four plates, three plates, two plates, one plate, all to failure. The only rest was taking the weight off. Moved on to heavy laterals, 40, 50, 60. Max set with 70, drop set to 35s. Rocked out, some rear delts. Couple sets, last set to failure. Front delt raises, single arm, coming up neutral grip. Did those until we couldn't get no more. Moved on, got some more lateral raises, tricep press downs, overhead tricep extension. So this is a good shoulder day. Most of my shoulder days will look like this, but as we get closer to the show, might mix things up, might pre-exhaust, because as we get weaker, if we get weaker, want to make sure we really tax the muscles. So we might pre-exhaust lateral raises before presses. But if you want to structure your shoulder day, it's a great way to do it. The first machine is an arsenal shoulder press. You switch that up with a hammer strength, dumbbell press, Smith machine. I like doing machines because I really want to overload the muscle. But again, these delts were built from barbell and dumbbell press. Right now, it's about overloading and maximizing my muscle recruitment. Anyway, be sure to subscribe to all my channels. Um, and of course, um, lowblinderlowdown.com, man. That's where you gotta go.